With the holidays approaching, police in Canada are making all the usual warnings about the tough penalties for driving under the influence, loss of license, hefty fines, possible jail time. But in the sleeping town of Kensington, they're warning of a cruel and unusual punishment for drunk drivers who find themselves in the back of a patrol car. Yes, Miranda Wright's handcuffs and the blaring sound of Canada's much maligned rock band Nickelback. Criminal Defence Attorney Darren Kavanaki joins me now. Mr. No Cuffs specialises <laughs> in DUI law. Okay, so what we've been we've been hearing from the police here, they posted this uh, message on Facebook. Uh, if you're foolish enough to get behind the wheel after drinking, then a little Chad Kroger and the boys is the perfect gift for you. So please, let's not ruin a perfectly good unopened copy of Nickelback. You don't drink and drive, and we won't make you listen to it. <laughs> you know, it, it's all kind of funny. I suspect you've got a bit of Nickelback on your, uh, your playlist over there. <laughs> I, well, that, I think that's a separate issue. Oh, sure. I'll exercise my right to remain silent. <laughs> okay, take the fifth. <laughs> but they, being Debbie Downer here for a minute. Yeah. D driving under the influence, drink driving, a serious problem. Um, are the police in this instance making light of it? I think that's the only criticism that they could possibly be subjected to. But really, I think it's so clever. And I'll bet you that tomorrow, chief marketing officers and corporations all around the world are going to be called into their boss's office to say, you know what, do one of those viral things for me. It's an authentic, real way to get people engaged in an important conversation. Yeah. It's a big problem. Because you hit people over the head with the don't, 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 the penalty, penalty, penalties. This sort of humanizes it almost. It, it, it makes it more accessible and it makes it okay for people to talk about it in yeah. a different way. I think it's very, very innovative. Okay. Um, the department told CNN today that they don't actually hate the band. Uh, <laughs> they said this, we are just using a different approach to get an age-old message communicated as long as it starts the don't drink and drive dialogue. We're happy with that, which is pretty much you know, what you've been saying. But right. you know, Canada has one of the worst rates of impaired driving in, in the world, so clearly they have to do something to get the message out. Right. Well, it's an important time. In the holidays, of course, we do see a spike in drinking-related activity and, and, unfortunately, drinking and driving. Obviously, we want to encourage people to exercise responsibility in all of their choices. But in Canada, in particular, we've seen that over half the, fa the fatalities that happen on the roadway involve alcohol or drugs and so this is a real problem that needs some real solutions and this opens up some opportunities for real dialogue so i'm very much in favor of what they're doing here yeah, here's the thing about nickelback they've sold more than 50 million albums uh makes them the 11th best-selling act of all time uh, billboard apparently ranks them what um most successful rock band of the 2000s. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does raise the question, why are the butter so many jokes so for that? Let's bring in uh, music writer and author of the Leftsit Letter, Bob Leftsit. So, Bob, how does such a big name in music get crucified like this? Everybody hates Nickelback. The bottom line is we all need to feel... We all need to feel good about ourselves. The way they do that is we do that is by hating on somebody. Whether we hate on Kanye, Kim Kardashian, etc. But in today's world where it's almost impossible to get noticed, if you have that much mind share amongst the public, you're winning. Nickelback is actually a good act. They did a song, this is how you remind me about 15 years ago. It was great, they continued to sell out arenas, okay? Many people say it's a repetitive sound, but the bottom line is these guys are suburbanites who are not cool. So all the wankers were saying how bad they are, they're never gonna go to the show anyway. So I applaud the uh, police for having a sense of humor. I don't believe this will have any impact <laughs> on people drinking and driving or not, but it just illustrates once again that we all need a whipping boy. Yeah, I mean, that's the question, though. I mean, the band isn't that bad. Is it really a punishment to listen to them in the back <laughs> of the car? I, I, I read that the police don't even have the Nickelback CD ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the story is the police chief said he didn't even own a Nickelback CD, so it was just a, a throw-off. It could have been anything. This was like down in Guantanamo Bay. They were playing Metallica. It's just a signifier for something people hate. And people who are hating don't get today's modern society. When we lived in the pre-internet era, there were very few things. We were all in a club. Now, most of the stuff we're into, no one else even knows about. So the people who are Nickelback fans are totally happy. They sell out arenas. They sell millions of albums. Now, of course, we're in a streaming world. People listen, and they're fine. So the people who are making fun of Nickelback, they don't get the joke. The joke is on them. 
Okay, don't Bob? put people down anymore because everyone, no one knows everything anymore. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Bob, except you. You know everything about music. That's why we have you on. Thanks so much. Thanks, Bob. You bet. Well, and now that this is a safe place, I will cop to the fact that maybe <laughs> see, there's a Nickelback. Left a, Bob left this man okay for you to come out of the closet. on my workout playlist, okay? Uh, okay. I'll, I love you, Nickelback. Okay. Yes. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's get serious here, though, for a yes. minute. Because if we look at the issue of drink driving in Canada, uh, they have some of the toughest laws on the books, right? They do. And as a matter of fact, even for citizens in the United States, they're unable to gain entry into Canada if they're on probation for DUI here in the U.S. So Canada takes it very seriously with jail, license suspensions. They do all those things internally. But even for people who have DUIs in other countries who want to come visit Canada, forget it. Is that, wow, that, that, that must be some of the toughest in the world. I mean, you, you are a defense attorney. One of your specialties is looking after people who, you know, get done for DUI. Who are allegedly... Allegedly done for DUI. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, the best advice is not to drink and drive. Um, but, but for people who, are get, who do get pulled over, you know, from a legal point of view, how should they handle well, these Well, I always tell people that the right to remain silent only helps if you do choose to exercise it, which... Obviously, I failed to do tonight, but uh, I, I recommend that in a polite way and exercise your right to counsel. I would uh, also encourage people to consider blood tests, actually, as opposed to breath tests. There are lots of ways to attack the integrity of blood samples. Uh, and, and if you are in this position, really find a lawyer who knows about the science of, of DUI. There's a lot of junk science out there and an awful lot to talk about. And, and you know, the best advice, Uber. Uber, Uber is cheap. Be safe, it, be responsible. It's everywhere. It's the best way of doing it. I would love to be put out of business thanks to Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of time. Darren, thanks so much. Thanks, John.